Let's see how to generate an integer number at random and how to use that to get a random element of an array. Here, for example, I'm using a string type array. It means that the elements defined inside are going to be strings. In the elements, I simply wrote A, B, and C to identify them when we print them in the console. But here, if you want, you can use an array of any type. For example, it could be a list of game objects to instantiate and choose one of those game objects at random. Or it could be, for example, a list of audio clips to play at random. Let's start by generating the random number. To do this, we use the random class. Inside the random class, there is a function called range. This function will allow us to generate random numbers. Specifically, the instruction would be random.range. And here, when opening parentheses, notice that this window is telling us that there are two overloads for this method. In this particular case, we are interested in the second version that returns an integer value. And notice that we need to pass two integer values separated by comma. The first parameter is going to be the minimum value to be considered by the function. And the second parameter is the maximum, but with the difference that this value is never reached. As to say, for example, if we define the function in this way, here the possible values are going to be 0, 1, or 2. And for example, if we set these parameters, the possible values will be minus 1 and 0. So with this, we can generate random integers within a range. What I'm going to do next is to save this number in this variable, and I'm going to print it in the console. Let's change this range from 0 to 3, as it was initially. I save the script and press play. Here, as you can see, the messages are being printed in the console. And here we will only find zeros, ones, and twos. Excellent. With this, we have tested that we can already generate random integers. Now, let's use this to access a random element inside an array. In this case, as I said, it's a string type array. It has a size of 3, and its elements are defined here. Note this important detail. In C Sharp, arrays start from element 0, and the last element will be the size of the array minus 1. If I want to access one of the elements of the array through code, here I will have to use the array, and between square brackets, pass the index of the element I want to refer to. For example, writing this, I'm making reference to element 0 inside the array. That is to say, the letter A. Doing this to element 1, with this to element 2, and if I do this, that to say, if I write a number that is not included inside the range of the elements, it will give us this error in the console. So, instead of passing a number here to access one of the elements, we can pass an integer variable, and this integer variable can be a randomly generated number. We just have to make sure that the range is the correct one. The minimum value is 0, and the maximum value is 2. It means that this, in principle, would be correct because the 3, although it's the maximum of the random.range function, we will never get that value because how the function works. The maximum value returned by the function will be the previous one. But here we have another problem. This here is hard-coded. If at some point we change the array and we add more elements, we would have to come to the code and change these values manually. To avoid that, what we can do is to pass the size of the array as parameter. Here, using the array variable, with the dot, we can access its internal parameters and look for the length parameter. Then, doing this, we will always generate a random number that will be within the range of the array. To finish, we are going to print this array in the console. Save the script, press play, and here, as you can see, the text that are being printed are the ones defined in the array, which are randomly selected in each one of the update executions. Let's make another test, increasing the size of the array adding the elements D and E. Press play. So that you can see that the fact of defining the function in this way means that it doesn't matter if we add or remove elements. The algorithm will continue doing what it has to do, which is to select one of these texts randomly. I hope you found this video useful and see you next time. Cheers.